from Victor N. Will a 16-8 fast help lose weight? Or do I need to do a multi-day fast to lose weight? A great question. Ultimately, it comes down to what is eaten outside of the fasting period. Right. So we want to be really careful that we don't assign too much importance to the non-eating phase at the expense of what's happening during the eating phase. Let's just take an example. Um, so in the case of Victor, he's saying, well, a 16-8 help me lose weight. Okay. So when he says 16-8, let's just assume he means he'll do a 16-8 every single day. And then he says, or do I need to do a multi-day fast? Well, let's assume he's proposing a three-day fast, a four-day fast. Let's be more extreme, a five-day fast every month. The question then becomes, which one of those is better for weight loss? And the answer is, it's kind of a trick question because you might actually gain weight on both of those fasting regimens. Yes, you heard me right. You could actually gain weight on both. Actually, you're looking at you're looking at one example of someone who has, uh, you know, yeah. depending on what I'm doing out in the feeding window. Exactly. So the biggest mistake that I see people making when they are new to fasting is assuming, hey, because I'm fasting, and this is my fasting window, and this is my feeding window, I it's it's like I get to do whatever I want here. And the reality of it is that's just not true for most people. So what you want to remember is the framework that I've proposed, which is this idea of time restriction, caloric restriction, and dietary restriction being the three variables that you're constantly toggling on as you manipulate your nutrition. Time restriction is what we're talking about now, which is when you eat, when you don't eat. Caloric restriction is how much you eat, and dietary restriction is what you eat and what you don't eat. One can lose weight without any fast. Caloric restriction and or dietary restriction alone can result in weight loss, but there are benefits of time restriction and fasting. There are a lot of things to do here, but to me, the right way to do this is to have a strategy in place for all three of these Yep. and cycle through them. You always want to be pulling one of those levers. I kind of describe them as the three levers of nutrition. You should always be pulling one. You should often be pulling two and sometimes even pulling three. Zero provides a lot of tools that you can monitor these things. In the history tab where you can look at your, your statistics, you know, one of the things I often look at, um, I'll look at my, you know, I'll have Apple Health hooked up so I have my weight and my scale uh, pushing weight into zero. I can look at things like, you know, what, what's my average fasting per, per week, per month? And you can start to see an overlay of your fasting practice and hours over things like your weight. And it doesn't get to the exact question of uh, is 16, eight better than a multi-day fast. But if you start to stack those total hours per week, for me personally, generally I've seen that as a pretty strong correlation. If my hours of fasting are going up, all it's being equal in my feeding window and I'm not eating like crap, my weight will either maintain or come down. So um, encourage people to definitely check out um, the history tab in zero and keep tabs on this during your journey.